everyone, and welcome to another MTA video where we're going to answer one of the number one questions that number we get one. asked on the podcast. And it's one of our favorite questions to answer. Yes. Because the question is, what do I expect at my first Grand Prix? We love Grand Prix so much and we're so excited for people to go and experience their first or maybe even their second or third or one millionth Grand Prix. Grand Prix are super fun and exciting magic events that you can connect with a lot of other magic players at. You can get play mats signed, you can get tokens from artists, you can get prints from artists, you can meet your favorite YouTubers or podcast personalities and maybe see some of your favorite magic heroes as well. So where can you find out about Grand Prix schedules? If you're looking for a Grand Prix that's maybe near you, or you're like, do you know what? I've been killing it at Modern lately. I want to go to a Modern Grand Prix. Yeah. You can find all of that information on the Premier Events schedule. And you find that by going to Daily MTG and then clicking on the Events heading and then going to the Schedules subsection. So Megan and I have attended a bunch of GPs now. At first, we attended ones that were close to us, near mm -hmm. our hometown, here in Minnesota, and then we started flying to them. So you can start out small and just visit Grand Prix near you, or make the leap and go to a Grand Prix like Vegas, which is really more like a magic convention. So what is a GP, Maria? A, gr a general practitioner. Uh, a, a great prince. A googly-eyed Persian cat. No, it's a Grand Prix. And a Grand Prix is a premier event, which means that the winners of this event will get pro points and cash prizes. It usually has that big main event, which will have maybe 1,000 to 2,000 players. It kind of depends. There's a really big range in there, but it's going to be a whole bunch of people showing up to play. Uh, there's also tons of side events though. Side events are awesome at Grand Prix. You can play draft, which is on demand, which means whenever there's eight people in the queue, a draft will fire and you go and sit down and play with some new friends at this Grand Prix. You can play commander games, two headed giant. There's sometimes chaos drafts with packs from wildly different sets that you draft together. Win a box, standard events, constructed events, uh, you know, like you can bring your dog and play magic with your dog in a two headed giant nightmare scenario. Those side events start on Friday. So the main event starts on Saturday, but as early as Friday, you can show up to the venue uh, and start playing those awesome side events. There's also going to be tons of vendors there. So if you have some sweet cards that you've been looking to trade in for some newer sweet cards uh, or sell, or you need to buy some cards for your deck, there's going to be tons of vendors on site who are able to do that for you. Fun fact, I traded my way into a standard deck at a Grand Prix that I played the next day. So it is possible. And keep in mind, you don't actually have to play the main event. You can just go and play sides, which uh, a lot of people do if they've got younger kids or something and they can't make the time commitment to spend an entire uh, couple of days at a Grand Prix. Go down there, just play some side offense and uh, have a good time. So like we said, what are you going to do? Well, maybe you're going to play the main event. Maybe you're going to play a lot of sweet side events. Maybe you want to go and play the PTQ that happens on Sunday. Yeah, I love that PTQ. It's pretty great. Uh, or you can get cards signed by artists, or you can pick up some really awesome prints and play mats. You can see some amazing prints behind us. Yes. Which are just a small sampling of the incredible prints that you can pick up if you go to a Grand Prix. Uh, and like we said, you can meet some of your favorite personalities. Yeah, I I remember the first time I met Marshall Sutcliffe from Limited Resources at a Grand Prix. I was so nervous. My palms are sweaty, mom's spaghetti, and I asked him uh, <laughs> to sign a card for me and gave him a little present. It was a, a really uh, cool moment. And uh, now I see Marshall and I just don't care. But <laughs> back then it was awesome. <laughs> You can also win super cool prizes at this event, by the way. So Grand yeah. Prix, uh, if you, as Megan said, if you make the top eight, you get an invitation to the next pro tour mm -hmm. that they're qualifying for. And you can also win money. They pay out pretty far down. Yeah, usually down to 64th place. So yeah, make some sweet cash if you're uh, if you finish well enough. And if you finish with three losses or less, you get to come back on this Grand Prix and play day two. So, you want to play the main event at this Grand Prix. Yeah, I do. What you going to do, man? <laughs> well, first of all, make sure that you know what the format is, whether it's limited or modern or standard or even legacy. 
Yeah. Uh, make sure you know what kind of Grand Prix you're going to uh, and bring all of your appropriate supplies. So any format, you're going to want to bring dice. You're going to want to bring paper to record your life total. You can't use apps at a Grand Prix. You're going to need to keep that record by hand. A pen, a play mat. Even if you're not a play mat person, we recommend bringing one because the table quality can really differ. Sometimes there's like slippery tablecloths. Sometimes the tables are like kind of weirdly like rough surfaced and yeah. you don't want to be scratching the backs of your cards and ending up with marked cards. Some Grand Prix give you a play mat for signing up, but be sure to check on the website before you go if you're not going to bring a play mat that you actually do get one with your registration. Yep. If you think that you might need tokens of any kind, make sure that you also bring some tokens. They can be really cute ones that you picked up from awesome art like RK Post, or can they can just be functional ones that you made them yourself. Maybe you cut out a square of paper and wrote 2-2 night on it. Either way, <laughs> it's going to get the job done. Keeping a board state that makes sense for both you and your opponent is always a good idea. Uh, in limited, you're going to want to bring sleeves, 40, plus maybe a couple extra in case you break a sleeve, and a deck box. In constructed, you're obviously going to want to bring the deck you're going to play. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget that. Hot tip. Yes. Uh, as well as maybe some extra sleeves again and a deck list. So a lot of these Grand Prix, you can now submit your deck list online the night before and we really recommend doing that. It's nicer for all of the people running it behind the scenes. It's easier for you so it's like off your mind but if you can't do that or they don't have the option then print it out and bring it plus some extra copies or make sure that you're getting to the event at least 15 to 20 minutes early so that you're going to have time to write out that deck list and double or triple check it. Yeah, they always say uh, make your deck list from your deck. Don't make it from something online because mm -hmm. uh, you might screw up and have like some cards that were included in the deck that you found online that you didn't actually end up placing in your deck and you forgot about it. So always register your deck from the physical cards you have in front of you. That leads us into you will be expected to know the rules of the game uh, and you will be expected to keep track of your own life total again on with pen and paper and to have submitted a correct deck list. So we don't want you ending up with a game loss because maybe you misregistered your deck and then you got deck checked. That really bums you out. Yeah, and you can't, uh, there's no takes, takesies backsies yes. at Grand Prix like you might experience at a pre-release or uh, casually at your kitchen table. So uh, you have to, as Megan said, follow the rules of the game and make sure you're playing correctly. That means keep taking time to make your decisions, but not too much time as we don't want a slow play, play warning. But uh, keep in mind that uh, what you do after you've moved on to the next phase of the game is what has happened. And yep. you need to respect that and the rules of the tournament. And remember, if you misplay you do something and you realize it and you say oh can I take that back and your opponent says no is not anything personal they're just again adhering to the rules level of a Grand Prix tournament always uh, be ready to call a judge if you need help it's not a bad thing to call a judge that's what they're there for they love coming to your table and helping you out and they'll uh, help you if you ever feel uncomfortable in a situation because of something your opponent is doing if you don't understand any of the rules or perhaps what might happen if you play a certain card the judges can walk you through the rules uh, if you have a uh, like a question about something your opponent has done or you suspect foul play or anything like that for whatever reason even if it's just an inkling in the back of your brain call a judge they are there to help you uh, remember that you're allowed to pile shuffle at a Grand Prix only once per game, uh, but it's probably a good a good idea to do it that once per game. So that, again, you make sure that you're always presenting either that 40 card deck or that 60 card deck uh, and that you're not going to be short cards because maybe you sideboarded. You want to make sure that you've still got 15 in your sideboard and 60 in your deck or 40 in your deck. And Fun you know. story. I uh, got a game loss for having uh, being short cards in a game, and I would have completely avoided this if I had pile counted before my match. Yep. Uh, and that also comes to like making sure that when you're packing up, go ahead and decide board at the end. Maybe you're like, oh, do you know what? Like, I'll do it before I start my no, next no, game. No, 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 no. Just go ahead and do it as part of your pack up. You're putting your play mat in your bag. You're putting your dice in your bag. Go ahead, count out your 60 card main deck, count out your 50, 15 card sideboard. Make sure that all those cards are in the places where they're supposed to be because you also don't want to lose them. It's a huge, usually a huge convention hall, tons of people. And if you let a card slip out of your deck, you don't want to be in a place where you're not able to find it again. That would really sting. 
quick hot tip, you can look at sideboarding notes in between games. So if you've been playing a new deck and you need a little help remembering how you want to sideboard versus other decks, you can bring a list that you've printed out or written out and uh, check it out between games as to which cards you want to bring in and take out. You can't look at it during the matches at all, but you can look at it during sideboarding. So, you're not interested in the main event. That's totally cool because a Grand Prix still has tons of stuff for you to do. So much stuff that people go to Grand Prix for side events and artists and all of that stuff, even if it's not immediately near them. You know, they'll drive a couple of hours oh, yeah. to go to a GP, uh, even though they're not interested in the main event. So one of the cool things that you can do is look up which artists are going to be at this Grand Prix and then bring cards that they've drawn for them to sign. This is awesome. If you've ever seen people playing with signed cards, you're, I'm always like, oh, that's so cool. Yeah. Uh, and here's the thing that you can do is bring them for them to sign and uh, tip them, tip your artists. This is how they make their living. So we suggest tipping a dollar a card, but some artists at will have- At least, that's at like least, a yeah. minimum. They'll have a little sign. Sometimes it says this is their requested donation for their signatures and stuff, but it's just good etiquette. And and uh, it leaves you with a super awesome, sweet collection. Yep, uh, and that also goes for buying prints and stuff and play mats. Like if there's an artist that you really love and they have an awesome print, like you should totally get it. One, it looks amazing on the wall. And two, again, you're supporting that artist being able to come out to future events uh, and you know keep signing cards and keep making prints and seeing everybody. So at a GP, the side events, there's kind of two different kinds that's on demand and scheduled. And on demand, we kind of touched on before, which is just if you need eight people or four people or whatever, it'll fire when it hits the requisite number of entries and scheduled is events that will start at a certain time and when you get to the Grand Prix there'll be a sign up that has all the scheduled events throughout the weekend that you can look at and check and make sure you can figure out when you need to be where. That's right. Uh, those scheduled events, if you see one that looks super interesting and then you're like, all right, do you know what? It's at 4 p.m. I'm definitely going to make it to that. Go ahead and sign up for it early because if they're super popular, you don't want it filling up and not grabbing a spot. So if you're like, that's cool, I'm doing it get on up there and sign up for it. Yeah, I would say that especially for the PTQ, which is the Pro Tour qualifying event on Sunday, pre-registration is highly encouraged. And uh, just do it, get it out of the way. That way you can make sure you have an entry and you can get there a little later the next morning. Last, we've got a couple of personal tips from us to you for if you're looking to go to this GP. And you know, this is just some, some good old us information. Some homespun <laughs> fun facts from Maria and Megan who have attended 6,000 GPs. Tip number one, bring water and snacks, okay? You're yeah. going to get hungry. You're going to get thirsty. And in between matches, uh, if you're feeling fatigued or hungry, you're not going to play your best. So pack like a granola bar or some peanuts or raisins or whatever and some water, healthy snacks, carrots. I don't know what, because the food at the venue, guess what? It's usually not very healthy. <laughs> That's right. Uh, and sometimes, you know, if you're feeling, again, like Maria said, a little fatigued after a round, it's also nice, like, yeah, you're usually there, like, you're hanging out with a bunch of friends, and it's really great. But if your brain needs a break, also, like, Go and find like a little quiet spot to hang out for a couple of minutes while you wait for the round. Sometimes I look up and I'm like, okay, there's 15 minutes left in this round. So I set a 15 minute timer on my phone. And then I know that it's like, okay, I can maybe go walk outside and just find a little, you know, clear head space, uh, like clear my brain out feel calm again, and then head back into the venue. Here's a tip that I have, and it's layer. It's the same tip you'll get for Seattle in winter. Uh, so I get really cold at Grand Prix a lot of the time yeah. because they crank the AC in those places. So I always bring a sweater with me, actually, especially in the summer months when they are tending to make the, the venues even colder than they are in the winter. So if I don't need it, I'll take my hoodie off and just put it in my backpack. But if I do, um, I'm really, really happy I brought it. We already touched on this, but it always bears repeating. Triple check your deck registration, whether that's limited and you're doing it right there at the table at the GP, or it's something that happened before. It's a constructed event and you submit it online or you're submitting on paper. Triple check it. You don't want to get, you know, just those small game losses, which really can put a damper on your day and count your deck and sideboard as you're packing up. So before you go to the event, if you're playing a constructed event like Standard or Modern, it's a good idea to check what decks have been doing well recently in big tournaments so that you know what to pack in your sideboard. 
Yeah, so maybe you have a deck that you're already keen on playing, you've brewed it up yourself, that's awesome. Or, but maybe you're also a little at sea and you're like, I don't know what to play. You can check out all of those awesome winning deck lists, uh, pro players' thoughts on sideboarding or on great decks to play right now on tons of awesome websites, Channel Fireball, TCG Player. These are all places that have pros writing for them. Uh, great articles where you can be like, hey, how does someone who's literally won the pro tour sideboard for this deck? Yeah, so it's it's really cool to be able to see, hey, this deck just won a tournament recently, Star City Games, or perhaps it's another GP, uh, Magic Online 5-0 and finishes. You can always check those on dailymtg.com. Mm -hmm. For instance, at the last GP Vegas, I was playing Boggles, as I'm known to do, and I no knew that Death Shadow was a huge deck in the format, so I packed uh, for my sideboard accordingly, and then I'll shift uh, again once I go to another tournament. So that's called reading the metagame, and it helps you be prepared for what you're going to see at a tournament. All right, everybody, that's what we've got to get you ready to go to your first Grand Prix. The most important thing, though, Maria, is what? To be excited and have fun because Grand Prix are awesome. Don't be intimidated. There'll be a lot of Magic players there. Some of them will be way better than you, but some of them will probably be worse than you. And most of them will probably be about the same as you. So when you sit down across from someone, try not to be nervous and know that everybody's there just to have a great time, maybe meet some new friends and play some sweet games of Magic. Thank you. 